my name is Aaron. Welcome back to my channel. How are you? I'm fantastic and I'm doing really well. And today I am viewing from the house of Mason Cravelli, Oud Maracaja, I think. But I want to say Macarena, so it's really, really difficult. Maracuja. I think it's how it's pronounced. 220 pounds for 50 mil. Baseness of leather and incense add a depth of character to this complex scent. This robust scent opens with a melody of fruity notes, passion fruit, black currant, intermingling with warm notes of saffron and woody oud, delivering rich and spicy finish. The notes are leather, amber, vanilla, labdomen, that word I can never pronounce is paraben free, fruity oud. Top notes are passion fruit, albina, saffron, Turkish rose. Middle notes are Indonesian patchouli and benzoin. And there's no base notes. Do we have a bottle of oud maracuja? Are we engaged with a higher self? Let's get testing. So look at the atomizer. Nice, wide, dispersive. I like the cap. I like the bottle and the label. You can tell that the label on the bottom hasn't been put on um, by machine because it's wonky. So from this, it is saying that it's oud, woody, leather, fruity. And that I kind of think is the, with oud base fragrance, that's the easiest direction to go. So this is some oud. I think I rejected. I was such that the reason I have this is when part of a perfumer's job is evaluating raw materials, evaluating, you're just smelling stuff all the time, which I think is the best part of the job actually, when you get a new raw material, but also you have to evaluate when you get an essential oil and natural generally. But there's a caveat in this. You sort of, you, you trust your nose. You look at your MSDSs, you look at your allergen decoration sheets, you look at your uh, COAs, you look at all this paperwork and you need to smell and use your brain to see whether the lavender you got, the Spanish lavender you got this time is the same as the Spanish lavender last time. And the nose can pick up these differences, I think better than anything, to be quite honest with you. I've rejected, not a lot, there were some citruses I rejected because they weren't the same. And even though they came from the same supplier, there was it was too much of a difference. There was one when I changed suppliers. Sometimes you change suppliers because of some reason, and that had oxidized, and that immediately you could tell. So that was rejected. And you have 30 days to evaluate it and send it back if there's a problem. The only time of the Roma chemicals I had rejected, there were two times actually I rejected uh, Aroma chemicals. One was ethyl maltol. There was a problem. I think it was the color and the texture. It was just something like a trace product. So there was something within it and I rejected it. It just had a funny smell to it. It just didn't smell consistent. And uh, there was vanillin and the vanillin had trace amounts of camphor in it. I don't know, in these massive factories, I don't know how that happened or where it went to. And I rejected that and I picked up the camphor in it because you send it back and then there's, they have to test it to see and there was camphor in it, just sort of trace amounts. But you can, you know, when you start working these raw materials regularly, you really can pick up on it. And that's a part of sort of the perfumer's life fragrance evaluation. So this is three mil of oud that I didn't really fit with the direction I wanted to go in with some releases I've got, but I've still got it. And I thought it'd be really lovely to sort of go through sort of the fragrance evaluation before I go on to do a reviewing in oud fragrance. So the first thing you'll notice is the viscosity, which is the thickness and flow. And this has got like a, like a treacly, it sort of warms, it's been in my hands, but it's quite treacly, quite thick. And these are fitting with sort of like saps, resins, balsams. They generally tend to be solid, semi-solid, or sort of quite viscous, quite thick, like treacly, or they're all quite dark generally. So this has got no solvents in it, it's just the pure oud. It's very strong, I can smell it kind of already. So all ouds have this base on them which is a base of woody, mossy, mushroom, damp, fecal, animalistic sort of base to it. You don't really use this at full concentration. I kind of, I think it's too unappealing. You really need to blend it and take it into a direction. But from here, I can smell the base of that distinctive oud. And oud has over 200 chemicals in it that make up oud. This is mossy, dark, 
resinous. And this is anaerobic oud, and that means that when they are when they cut down the tree and they take the oud out of it, they then soak it. And they soak it either aerobically or anaerobically. Aerobically uh, gives you hydrogen sulfide within the compounds. And that gives you the smell of sort of uh, that fecal note. Anaerobic is more time consuming, more more mam sort of power involved in it. It's much, much more expensive because you have to take out all the oxygen and allow it to reduce down and then it is distilled off. I never buy any food with hydrogen sulfide in. Personally, I don't like that smell. I find it quite difficult to work with. It's kind of more challenging. I prefer food which is sort of more accessible. But then you get into the top notes and this is where the oud sort of changes. And this is sweet, sort of balsamic. Balsamic is like, um, the way to think about that is like a, with a vinegar, that sort of sweet sort of um, balsamic note. Smells sort of good smell, but really good quality balsamic vinegar. It's got that sort of balsamic quality to it, not vinegary. And this is sweet. And then you start going into the leafy. It smells sort of leaf, green, but it has a sweetness to it, but it's definitely balsamic. It's an interesting compound to smell, so I, I, I would hope you'd get good quality oud and sort of if you're if you're a fragrance connoisseur and just sort of smell it. I just think it's a very interesting compound to smell. Definitely smells sort of Middle Eastern, giving you that. So I'm going to apply it a little bit as reference. Oud is actually allergen free, which means it's uh, not restricted by IFRA and it's perfectly safe to put on the skin. Some compounds are allergenic. So this is metallic now. So on my skin, it's, I'm getting a metallic note. So you're getting this sort of metallic quality. And the metallic notes are the thing I love the most about Oud. That metallic harshness to it. This is beautiful, actually. Maybe I'll buy it. Smelling it like this, you know, refreshing my memory. Sweet, sensual, tinny, like a tinny quality to it. Let's go on to the review. So I smelt this from the bottle. And I'm just rooting. And from the bottle... It's got that leather, which is that uh, undoubtedly when you are constructing leather or you're constructing saffron, you're going to use sebquinolone or sulfurine or combinations of both, depending on the direction you want to go. But on the skin, it's completely different. I thought, oh, great, we're going to have a really like a classic, you know, raspberry ketone, vanillin, ambroxin, sort of wood notes. I really thought I was going to go for that. That's what's detecting the leather. On the skin, it's completely different which is why you always test it on your skin. Ambroxin base, I don't like the passion fruit note. There's raspberry ketone, vanillin, and other fruit molecules. And for me, that's quite jarring, actually. It's like a nectarine sort of quality mixed with the raspberry ketone and the leather. I've mentioned before, this is my opinion, of course, you know, I'm not the authority, but this is just my opinion. I think when you are designing a perfume, you've got things that go together and things that don't go together. And for me, I think this is more of an experimental perfume. It smells like an experiment, so it's quite a cool smell. But that nectarine, raspberry ketone, vanilla, and ambroxin, sebuquinolone, for me, that nectarine note sort of sticks out a little bit too much. I don't like that. It's got some Lily of the Valley raw materials to soften this. So this has been finessed beautifully. The, the perfume has done a really beautiful job of taking I think this is a hard fragrance. Patchouli, balsams would like raw materials do you know if it didn't have that that nectarine it's just that one thing which is sticking out for me. if it just was a little bit more simplistic like if it just had the raspberry the vanilla which kind of really goes together i don't know i would construct it slightly different that that nectarine note is really a little bit off-putting for me and it's not as strong as i thought it was going to be from here i'm really getting sort of patchouli i'm getting that sort of like that strength from here, it's quite flat and it's flattening down. Definitely, and the ambroxin, then the ambroxin is giving me that metallic note. There's a raw material called ambrol. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I love that. There's a few real metallic aroma chemicals. Ambrol is one. Z11P is another metallic note as well. I love metallic notes. I just think they add high tech sort of feel. And with ambroxin, they kind of work really, really well. I think it's been amazingly constructed. Technically, it's just, it's a really like uh, incredible work of art. But it's going quite flat. And this is the problem when you've got quite a heavy formula and you haven't got too much of an elevation in there. Onto my final thoughts. 
what a disappointment I got set. I was really excited to try it. From here, if it smelled like this, I would love it. And I kind of like, oh my God, yeah, it's going to be amazing. But from here, it's giving me fuzzy peach. Fuzzy peach, vanilla, nectarine, raspberry ketones. It's kind of all right, but kind of disappointing if I'm on view and I'm lower gutted. On a plus side, I think it's blended beautifully. It smells beautifully blended. This is a difficult concept to come up with. So I think the perfume it did a like outstanding job. This is hard. You'd have to step outside your comfort zone with it. But I love the leathery aspect to it. I love the patchouli aspect to it. I love the ambers. I love the raw materials. I just really just don't like that sort of passion for note. For me, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit off-putting, you know? I'm going to mark it a 7 out of 10. Uh, I just don't like that that nectarine note for me it's kind of sticking out a little bit too much i understand that that's the marketing behind the perfume but for me i don't like it but i love the rest of it if that was reduced down or just taken out and just with raspberry sort of ketones and vanilla i'd really love it and it'll get really like amazing marks i kind of love it now i'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 i think the perfumer did an outstanding job this is a hard perfume to kind of really finesse right with all these heavy raw materials these raw materials don't go together and what i was saying earlier which is when you get your raw materials together this is experimental so for me this feels like this is two things which shouldn't go together and kind of smells like it shouldn't go together but that's my opinion uh out here i kind of love it and the dry down is better when you get rid of that next ringy note so we love that review thumbs up and subscribe for fascinating interesting content lots of moving hands and lots of fragrance views hope staying safe and well See you soon.